All right, guys, so today we are going to spiralize the butternut squash. I'm going to first really quick assume that you know how to um, peel a butternut squash, but just in case you don't, the easiest way to do it is to just have a bowl or something close by so you're not doing this over the trash because these guys get really slippery and you do not want to be trying to do this over the trash can. I try to take a two-part approach. The first part is um, I like to go around the bottom and create like a circle. So the butternut squash doesn't have as thick of a skin as like a spaghetti squash, but it's still, these guys are kind of like gnarly to be working with, especially because they do get so slippery. So you guys can see, I'm just kind of going around in a circle around the bottom of the bowl. Once I have a pretty good bit gone then I will work on just going straight down and just going around super easy nothing crazy this way I'm not trying to go all the way around this it's just quick simple strokes and once this gets like it's getting in my way I can just move the so this is really good just in general for like any kind of meal prep, anytime you're doing something um, that needs to be, so carrots are another really good thing to just have a bowl next to you. And then you can put all the seeds in it, everything else. So just going to quickly finish peeling this and then I will show you how you want to cut a butternut squash when we're going to be spiralizing it because you want to try to keep as much of the long part of the squash intact because that's what gets hooked up to the spiralizer. Okay, so I'm going to move this stuff out of the way and then we're going to talk real quick basic knife safety. The sharper your knife, the less likely you are to cut yourself with it. So if you're using a really dull knife that you got for $7.99 17 years ago and it barely cuts through a tomato, um, probably not what you want to be using to cut through a butternut squash. Um, invest in a good set of knives. You can get something decent usually at like Macy's or even Bed Bath & Beyond, something like that for $100 or less or around that price. So don't let have one good knife even if you have to, which can be even cheaper. All right, so you don't have to worry about cutting into the bowl right now. Um, what you do want to do is you want to try to see the seeds are in the bulb and so you're not going to be able to spiralize once you get to the seeds part. So what you want to do is you want to find kind of where it starts to crook out and then you just want to go down and then pull your knife back out. And then again, down and then pull your knife out the way you came. So what you don't want to do is like jagged edge into here because this isn't a solid surface, it can rock. So for me, I try to just go away from the body and then as you're coming back, see how much smoother that is? Um, if you feel comfortable with your knife, you're probably fine. But you guys can see I'm always going because there was resistance there. I can feel right here that the seeds are right underneath this. So I was right there at the bulb. And then again, you want to hold on to this. It won't rock as much now. And again, go down. If you're feeling resistant, pull back and then recenter in. So this is what you're going to use when you set up your spiralizer. Um, and then from here, you can cut into this later on or use it however you want to. But this is what you need for spiralizing your butternut squash. All right, guys, so the butternut squash has been peeled and we cut off the big part from the bulb. So we're going to spiralize this now. I have a, a spiralizer. The reason I like this is because the knob, when you turn it, it has all of the blades built in. So I'm going to use the, I think it's a B blade, um, but it's essentially the middle blade. So it's not the super skinny um, noodles, but it's not the super thick ones either. Now I'm going to try to make what would look like spaghetti. So I don't want there to be any breaks or lines in this. So I'm going to set this up. So this in spiralizer is in, um, there's a, something to catch the noodles and I probably can move this over a little bit more so you guys can see it a little bit better but I've got something already ready to catch the noodles and this is actually the um, sill pad that I'm going to cook them on in the oven as well so super simple it's flexible which I like and it doesn't take up a ton of room in the pantry so we're going to 
stick your butternut squash. Now veggies like this, the heavier root veggies, you do want to make sure you really push in so that the, the little teeth make it. And then you want to really press into this in the beginning. So I'm just going to see I'm holding it down because I need to be able to press into it. The butternut squash is just super thick but as you can see it creates so many noodles. So if you're used to going to Whole Foods or something like that and picking up your noodles this is so much easier than it looks. It just requires you to have the equipment and a little bit of time. Aren't you glad you're watching this? It's a little bit of a workout, but it's not bad. So, totally worth it. Gotta make more room. So this is why I don't end up trying to use like a bowl or anything though. I just use this sill pad because you guys can see if I was trying to catch this in a bowl, it would be really hard to kind of catch everything. So that's why I've gone to this method. I used to try to catch it on a bowl. but. All right, and I'm not going to even bother with the last little bit. So here's the thing. Once this is all done, I'm going to roast these. So it does not take as long to make butternut squash in the oven once it's spiralized because there's a lot less thickness. But what I want to do is I'm going to cut off just like I would cut a normal butternut squash, like scoop out the shells, cut it up, roast this for something else. I'll roast, I'll cut this up too so that we're not wasting anything. Um, throw it into salads, throw it into your eggs, things like that. You can even just roast this right there with it. It'll be totally fine. But as you can see, you don't have too much waste out of there. And then there are lots of different ways today. I'm gonna roast this in the oven, 400 degrees. Um, I'll show you kind of how I set it up. I'm gonna use two pans because you guys can see how much this is. So this butternut squash I think was like $2 or $3 at Trader Joe's and if you got a package of these zoodles at uh, Whole Foods or the grocery store you'd probably get half of this for triple the price. So yes it is a little bit of an investment of time but you're going to get a lot more benefit out of it by doing it yourself and now you know how. So I'll show you guys how to roast these up. You can also cook these on the, um, in, on the stove but I'll show you that another day. All right, so like I promised, I just wanted to show you kind of the method to getting these in the oven and cooked up nice and good. So I divided that big pile into two piles and I also broke down the bulb so that I could use it. I'm actually going to make um, something else with this, so ignore this. Um, but you can either use like a garlic infused olive oil, just drizzle it over. Um, add a little bit of salt, pepper, if you want to add your spices now you can, or you can leave it unseasoned and um, season it later. I'm actually, for this one, going to divide this between a sweet and a savory. So for the sweet, I'm going to use some Madagascar vanilla ghee. I'm going to melt this over it. Um, so I'm going to melt this in the microwave and pour it over, but I'll show you what I'm doing um, with my savory one. So I'm just going to use a little bit of avocado oil. You don't need a ton, just enough to help it get a little crispy in the oven. Um, so that's about a tablespoon-ish, and then we're going to do a pinch of salt, so half of a teaspoon or so. You can always add more salt later, so don't worry about that. And then if you don't like to get your fingers dirty, get some tongs, but God gave you the best fingers of, or the best kitchen utensils of all. And you guys will see I use the um, um, silicone mat on this one, but I use parchment on this one so that you could easily utilize the parchment if you don't have the silicone mats. Um, and that is done. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to melt a little bit of this butter in a small jar um, and just, again, pour it over about a tablespoon, nothing crazy. Pour it over this, add a little bit of cinnamon and roast these together in the oven 400 degrees for about 10 to 12 minutes um, and take them out and you can let them cool. They should not get soggy in 10 to 12 minutes. 
If you leave them in there for too long though, they will start to get super soggy and disintegrate on you or burn. So you don't want to do that. 400 degrees, 10, 15 minutes, max 15, probably 12 is good though. Um, and after that, you can go to town, you guys. This is a really great addition to your um, meal prep. Super simple, so easy. And this is a great way to add carbs. If you're having like a carb day and you want to add some lentils or some black beans or something like that, super easy. All right, I'm gonna go off to the oven with this one and see you guys soon.